Now for seven marks we've got to solve this simultaneous equation. And for any simultaneous equations what I'd want to do is number them. Number them one and two respectively. Now because the pattern structure is not the same in these equations what we need to do is solve them by substitution. And if you're unfamiliar with the method of solving simultaneous equations by substitution, you can always go on my website and there's plenty of tutorials on that, okay? So, assuming that you're familiar with this, all we need to do is take one of these two equations, the simplest one, which has to be one because it hasn't got any squares in, and make either x or y the subject. I'm going to choose x to be the subject, so I would say to the reader, that from equation 1, it'll direct them to equation 1, we're going to make x the subject, so I just need to subtract y from both sides, so x would equal 2 minus y. And we'll call this equation number 3. Now you could have made y the subject, doesn't matter, you could try that, okay, and follow much the same kind of method as I'm going to do now and you should end up with the same solution. It's a good exercise to do. But now I've got x in terms of y, I'm going to substitute this into equation 2. So again, we'll just put a little intro here, guide the reader through what we're doing. Sub 3 into equation 2. And what that's going to give us is that wherever we see an x, we're going to write 2 minus y. So what we have is that therefore 4y squared minus, now x squared, we need to write that in brackets, so it's 2 minus y all squared equals 11. Now we need to expand this bracket here, and I know we could expand it straight off, I'm sure there's some of you out there that can do that, but it's very easy to trip up on something like this. So what I'm going to do is just write the two brackets out, and that equals 11. And when we expand these brackets, we've got to be very careful because of this minus sign. Put another bracket here, even though we're expanding this. So we've got 2 times 2, which is 4. We've got 2 times minus y, which is minus 2y. And here we've got another minus 2y, so that's going to be minus 4y. And minus y times minus y is plus y squared. And that equals the 11. Now if we expand the bracket, we're multiplying by minus 1 to each of these three terms, we're going to get minus 4 plus 4y minus y squared equals 11. And we've got a quadratic equation here where we need to put it in the right format, that is subtract 11 from both sides, make it equal to 0. And at the same time we can do 4y squared minus y squared which is 3y squared. 4y goes next, and then if we subtract 11 from both sides, minus 4 minus 11 is minus 15, and that equals 0. And when you've got something like this, you could use the quadratic formula, but there was no evidence in the question. It didn't say give your answers in, well, with roots in or anything like that. So it's a good suggestion that this is going to factorise. So if we do factorise it, it turns out to be two brackets, obviously equal to zero, don't forget that, so many people do. We're going to have a 3y multiplied by a y, so it's going to give us 3y squared. Two numbers that multiply together to give minus 15. If you play around with combinations, you should find that one of these is going to be a 5 and the other is going to be a 3 we're going to want a plus on this one, so that's plus 9y, take away 5y here, gives us the 4y. So, that means that now either this factor, 3y minus 5 equals 0, or the other factor, y plus 3 equals 0. And if we add 5 to both sides here, we end up with 3y equals 5, and then divide by 3, y equals 5 thirds. And it's best left like that rather than 1 and 2 thirds, but that's up to you. And for this one, if we subtract 3 from both sides, y is going to equal minus 3. So all we need to do now is substitute these two values of y into any one of these three equations to get x. 
but clearly the best one to use is number three. So I'm just going to say sub in three, right? So when y equals five thirds, what we've got then is that x equals two minus five thirds. Well, that's going to be six thirds. Take away five thirds is one third. So x equals one third. And then we can do the other value for y. When y equals minus three, we see that x equals two minus minus three. Two minus minus three, or two plus three, which is five. So when you finish, make sure you just pair up your answers. So we've got x equals one third, and I'm always going to write x before y. I'll tell you why at the end, okay? x is the third, y equals five thirds. Or we've got x equals five when y equals minus three. There's our solution for this question. but why would I encourage you to write x before y? Well, quite often questions like this could be worded by saying, where do these two curves intersect? And if you're asked that, you'd have to give them in coordinate form. So there'd be two points of intersection at the point one third, five thirds, and at five minus three. So it's always a good idea to write your x before your y, right? Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea and this question is worth seven marks.